So hello friends, today in this tutorial we will be looking at a new framework called as next.js. It's a React framework for building server-side applications using React. And in this tutorial we will be looking at the concepts of next.js and through that we will be building a simple application using JSON placeholder API. And we will be making a fetch request using the API you can see we are fetching post here multiple post out there you can see we have a simple nav bar which is this is a heading here next.js this is the name of the app and we have the navigation here this is the home page and this is the about page you can see so we can successfully navigate we will be looking at in this tutorial how to uh, successfully implement the navigation inside next.js quite a lot of concepts we will see you will see these are multiple posts out there a hundred posts we are fetching from the json placeholder api this is a fake rest api for developers for testing out and let me just show you the api this is the endpoint that we are hitting here you can see this is the endpoint and it, it runs a json response to us this is an array of 100 posts out there so we are just looping it and displaying it inside our next.js application so now uh, if you want to explore more about next.js just write next.js on google and this is the framework which is brought to you by Versal. And uh, th this is the official documentation of the React framework, which is next.js. This is a site here, next nextjs.org. So if you want to read more about it, just go to this website, read the documentation and follow this tutorial. We will be looking at the in-depth look on how to go about the things. And uh, the link will be there inside the video description for all the source code. This is my step-by-step -step blog post that I have written here. All the steps that are shown in the video will be there inside the video description. This is a step-by-step -step blog. You can just follow along with it. The link will be there inside the video description. So now to get started guys. So first of all, we will be uh, making a new directory for our project. So I will be going into my projects directory. So simply I will open command line and I will be initializing npm init dash y so now this will create the empty package.json file so after getting to that we need to install three dependencies first dependency will be react so npm install react then we need to install react dash dom and the third dependency we need to install is next next is this framework dependency so just install these three dependencies inside inside your project folder and i will be back once they are installed successfully so so now you can see that guys all the dependencies are successfully installed and once you you will see this folder created which is dot next so this folder will be automatically being created inside your visual studio code text editor and then we have the node modules folder so this contains all the dependencies which are installed and inside this package.json file you will see all the dependencies which are installed. So for fetching the API, for making API calls we will be using this uh, dependency which is isomorphic-unfetch. So basically you just need to go to your directory and just uh, execute this command npmi isomorphic-unfetch. So basically this is a node dependency for making API calls using fetch. So just install this. I have already done that. So that is why it is present inside my package.json file. Apart from that, we have installed next, react and react-dom. So now after this, you need to go to the script section and delete all the stuff which is present inside it. And now we need to write the start script. Or let's suppose we will first of all write dev script. So here we will write only next then we will have the build script which will build the application for us so this will be equal to next build and then we will have the start script so just write start here and that this will be next start that's it so these are the three scripts that we need to write now we can just create our application guys so as you know this is a server side framework so we need to be uploading some pages so in next.js there is a concept called pages so once you open your uh, let me just execute the application now uh, now to start this application we will run this command which is npm run dev script we will run this command 
which will start the next framework so now it will give me an error because you can see couldn't find a pages directory so by default next uses a pages directory to find the actual pages which needs to be rendered on onto the application so now to fix this problem we need to create a pages directory here pages folder and inside this we will first of all create the index page which will be index.js so here we will be creating let's suppose we will define a functional component of react i am assuming that you have a prerequisite knowledge of react before watching this tutorial so export default we can write like this uh, we can say we can have a simple div which will say this is the index page that's it so now we can run the application once again if i run this command npm run dev now you will see it will not be having any sort of error it will start the application you will see http localhost 3000 i need to open this application here if i refresh here now you will see localhost 3000 it is refreshing here so just wait now you can see this is the index page so it is successfully showing our index page because by default it looks for this file which is index.js so if i change the name here to something else this will not work you can see if i change this name to ty and once again it is hot reload so once you make any sort of changes it will hot reload so now if i uh, again refresh it you will see it will have this 404 error this page could not be found so by default it looks for this file which is index.js so same goes for php applications once you make php applications on the server side you make the file called as index.php so same goes for next.js also so you need to be naming this file as index.js so this is our home file similarly we can create a, another page will, which will be about.js which will be the about page so we can copy paste the simply this code here again and simply paste it here and we can just change this to this is the about page so you will see now now if i if i go to if i want to go to the about page i will simply say slash about so you will see this is the about page so you can see in this manner you can create as many pages as, as you want and um, now you can see we can create this inside a next uh, separate variable you can see uh, let me just show you the correct practice coding practice we can just create a variable index and inside this we can store all these things you can see we can show a div element and then we can have this is the index page so basically this is a better convention which you have seen inside any react application so then we can export this component which is index so same we can do this for about as well so let me paste it so here we will change the this is the about page so now i will also change this to about and also this one so very simple so if you make this change nothing will happen all the things will remain constant you will see this is the about page and if i run once again load this is the index page so now all the things are good here now you can just follow along with the blog i have written all the instructions step by step i am following the video here you can see you can also follow the blog as well so now now after doing this you can see we can place this inside a heading as well so I can just put a heading here h1 heading so so here we can just change this is the about page and also we can have a simple paragraph this is the app made in next.js and inside the index.js we can have a h1 heading h1 heading and here we can say uh, all post from json placeholder something like this so now if i refresh it you will see this will now be containing a heading here you can see all post from json placeholder so now we will create links here guys inside our next.js to facil facilitate the navigation part 
so you can see linking pages in next so there is a certain module which you can import here so let me just show you the module which is right here inside your index.js at the very top you can import it import link from and this is contained inside next slash link so basically next uh, contains this module you need not have to install any sort of third party module so it is contained inside next so now to use it it is pretty simple you just need to use an ordered list here an ordered list and inside this we will have li tag and then we can use link so here we can provide a value href so this will point to the home page and here inside this link tag we need to provide anchor tag and the label we can give as home here so in inside the anchor tag we just don't need to give href so this is not necessary and now we can simply repeat this to about here and uh, the about will be simply slash about and then we can change the label as about that's it i can format the document so you can see the formatting looks good if i refresh so you can see if i refresh here mm, so it is compiling so just wait it is compiling so it is saying module not found cannot resolve oh you can see now this is a home page and this is the about page if i click it you can see this goes to the about page so we also need to hook the same functionality inside our so we can import link from react oh sorry next link and then we can use the same code that we did write in index.js so we simply copy it and paste it inside like this so we will also have this on the about page as well so you can see so this is already linking it that the navigation is complete you can see the linking process is very much simple in next.js you just need to use this module so one problem is there inside our code you can see we are repeating this code here which is navigation code so we are uh, not follow we are violating the principle which is don't repeat yourself in code so we are repeating a lot of stuff here this code is also repeated in both the files so we can use some kind of uh, uh, components so here what we can do is that we can create a separate folder called as components sorry this needs to be contained outside so we can make a component folder components sorry let me just spell it wrong components and inside this we can create a navbar component navbar.js so inside this here we can write our code here so simply we can say const navbar and here we can paste the code which we right here so simply we will just copy this code and simply i will switch this code to its respective component so here we will write a dev element and paste it here so now we also need the link module as well so we can just import link from next slash link so at last we also need to export this component so we can just say the line export default navbar so you can see so now we can simply delete this in both the pages since we don't want this we can include the navbar file so now to include this component which is there inside the components folder we can simply write a line import line first of all we need to import this import navbar so this is contained inside the components folder and this is navbar and here we can write this like this navbar simply close this and we can repeat this line import navbar which is components navbar and again we can write this like this so 
so now we we can delete this link module here from here we, since we don't need this so now the code looks great you can see if i refresh it you will see nothing changes all the things remains the same but now the approach looks good because we are we are not repeating the same code in both the files so the approach is good so since react is all about components so we have switched the code of navbar into its own component which is navbar.js you can see Uh, now guys we will look at how to style a certain component inside next.js so you have this navbar component ready here you can see that now to style it it is pretty simple whenever this div tag is ending here just write the style tag in order to style it and inside this style tag we just need to give a attribute jsx and then a set of curly brackets surrounding it and here we need to write backtick symbol here which is backtick symbol and here we can write the journal css here so here we can target the ul tag unordered list so here we can provide a simple background color as well so this time let's suppose this we can change this to 333 which is a brown color so now if i refresh the application you will see the background color will be changed you can see so in this way we can style a certain component which will these styles will be applied to the component which you are writing the code so i have copy pasted i have given all the css code here so simply go to my blog and copy paste the code here and uh, i will paste it so basically this will style the my navbar here you will see this will style it this is home page this is about page so it is styling only the navbar component so it is not global css global css is not recommended in react applications so you need to write css only specific to the uh, components that you are working on so after this guys what we can do is that we can have uh, a certain layout or file also uh, you can just go to my blog the next step let me just show you what is the next step we need to do so we will talk about layouts in next.js so for layout this is again a again a component file which we need to create let me just create this file inside of a components folder so simply we will create uh, a layout so layout is nothing but uh, it contains all the necessary tags necessary files which needs to be placed in a common layout and then that common layout you can include it inside pages so inside the layout what we want is that we want the nav bar so uh, what we can do is that inside layout so we can declare a variable first const layout and uh, this will be this arrow function so sorry so this will also take the props here properties shorthand and uh, here what we can do is that we can have a div and then we can render out props dot children so let me just write the code and then explain to you what is happening so after that we can just export this component export default layout so now what we can do is that guys you can just follow this so we can have our navbar as well so we need to also uh, include the navbar as well inside this layout so in order to include this we need to import the navbar component so import navbar which is available inside the file which is uh, navbar here you can see so we can include this as well like this so we have successfully included this navbar as well so after this guys what we can do is that we also need to have a head component so head component is very much useful in every page so this is a component which is built in in next.js similar to the link component so you can just include this by next slash head you can see and now we have the head tag so we can include the head tag like this so inside head we can define a lot of things we can define the title of the page and we can also put the css uh, javascript as well so 
So we can have the title of the page to next.js app like this and then we have we need to include the bootstrap cdn so we will be using some bootstrap so let me just have my bootstrap included so i will be including it by the cdn so you can just go to its official website and include this by the cdn so here we can just paste it this is a cdn and you can see that so this is all contained inside this head tag which we are coming from this next slash head module which is available inside next.js now we can simply include this inside our pages this layout so we can simply remove this navbar we also need need not have to define navbar in both the files so one file we will take which is layout so import layout from so which is available inside components layout and then we can wrap this whole inside our layout tag so you can see layout so this is a benefit of a layout file you can wrap everything inside layout you can see we can do the same thing for our about page sorry this is about page so we simply need to do this same thing for our index page as well so dot dot component slash layout and then we can wrap this so we can just simply wrap this and we can also delete this navbar since we don't need this so the navbar is defined inside the layout file you can see so now if i refresh it the file will compile successfully and now let me just see you will see now the bootstrap is included you can see all the pages are work working fine here if i check the navigation as well so you can see this is a navigation as well working properly so now we can add a certain container class to both the pages so in order to do the do this we can make a single change inside the layout file which will automatically change both the pages so here inside this props dot children we can surround this by a class which is available in bootstrap so class name which will be container container is a bootstrap class as you know inside bootstrap we have a container class this adds some margin and padding to the elements so now if i refresh this after making this change inside layout you can see it adds certain margin and padding to the content this looks great so this is the advantage of layout file you did not have to make changes in both the files you just need to make the change in the one common layout file and that those changes will be automatically done in all the pages that inher inherit that layout so after making this guys we will turn this uh, navbar to a bootstrap navbar so i will delete all the styles that i defined inside my custom style sheet this is just for demonstration i will delete this i don't need these styles so i will delete this all this code here so just delete it and here you just need to go to my blog we have the simple bootstrap navbar which is ready here if i just show you as we have included the cdn of bootstrap so if you drag down you will find you can see this is a file here so simply this is a navbar or bootstrap so i will just copy the html code i will not write it because so i will just paste it this is html i will just format the code you can see now if i refresh my application you can see now the application looks pretty good this is a navbar bootstrap navbar this, this is the heading logo of the website and this these are the navigation this is the about page this is the home page so now the application looks great now we simply need to make the api call to json placeholder api so let me just show you the json placeholder api what will be the endpoints that we will be hitting here so if you just type json placeholder api it's a fake online rest api 
to test out the APIs. So first of all, we will hit this endpoint here. You can see that we will copy this. So if you run this, you, you will return a simple object which will have the user ID, ID, title and completed value. So we will display it on the screen. So for doing this, we will first of all need to install this dependency which is isomorphic unfetch. Let me just show you that dependency. If you go to npmjs.com, this is a simple dependency. You can just search here, which is isomorphic dash unfetch. Isomorphic unfetch. So it is similar to fetch that you use on the browser side. It is just uh, it is just a alternative for fetch which needs to be used on the server side. You can see it is a very popular dependency which is four, over 4 lakh downloads you can see. Now to use this guys it is pretty simple you need to include this dependency inside the file where we are making the fetch request. So just move to index.js here we will import the dependency import fetch and we will dip, uh, import this from isomorphic and fetch that's it. So now we will make the fetch request. So this needs to be made inside the lifecycle method which is available in next which is called as uh, <coughs> let me just show you if you drag down in order to make a API call there is a method here which is called as uh, get initial props. So this is a lifecycle method which is available in uh, uh, next and this needs to be async function we can define this like this and here we can define uh, we need to use the await keyword since it's a async function and here we can use the fetch library here and here we need to paste the url which we are making the post request or oh, sorry get request and again this returns we need to change this to json so again we will declare data and again await keyword response we will change this to json by using json method like this and then we can console log data like this and then we can return the data so the return statement is very much mandatory so now if you load the component it this function will automatically trigger so basically it's a life cycle method so once again if i refresh the application just check the console you will see this returns the same object which is user id1 id1 title and completed value so now we simply need to display this value so what we can do is that instead of returning this we can return an object so we can return the title sorry id id is there inside data.id we can have the title property which is data.title and the third property will be completed which is data.completed so now to display this value what we can do is that we can have we can have the paragraph which is the id of post is and then colon then we can display this inside double curly brackets sorry single curly brackets and inside this we can write we need to be having props here shorthand from properties so here we can write props dot and followed by the variable that we are sending here which is id you can see props id so if you display it it should work you can see the id of the post is one similarly we can display the title and the completed value so paste it here so this will be title simply we need to change title so props dot title and uh, the for the completed value we will have props dot completed the completed of post so i am showing you the method you can just repeat it for any api call that you make so you can see the completed value will not be shown since it is a boolean value so there is a workaround you can do this like this you can surround this by like this sorry just wait Oh, sorry this needs to be like this but here what we can do is that we can surround this inside this brackets here and then we can write data dot completed like this and now if you refresh you will see 
वट इज सेंग है लेट मी जस्ट सी गाइज इन द ब्लॉग इट इज वर्किंग हेयर लेट मी जस्ट सी कंप्लीट इट इट शुड वर्क नो लेट मी जस्ट सी लेट मी पेस्ट इट Oh, sorry. We have. You can see, we have made a mistake here. We have added this extra dollar sign, so that is why it was not working. So, you can see it is printing out the boolean value as well. False here. You can see that. So now this is only one post. We also need to uh, print out multiple post. But before that, we need to uh, move this into its own respective components. So here we can create another component. which is inside components folder so here we can create post.js and here we can define simply post and here we can say and then we can export default post post and here we can uh, copy paste the code here which you defined inside your index you can move this code to its respective component so paste it here so we will have a parent div which will be having so paste this code so we have to be having props here we need to so the props properties will be coming to this component so here inside index.js whenever we are calling this component so let me just delete all this so first of all we need to include this so import post from this is there inside the post component so here what we can do is that we need to call this component we need to include this so this time we need to pass some values as well in the form of properties first we need to pass uh, id which is there inside uh, so this is a format id is equal to and then with the value so here we can pass props dot id then we need to pass title so this is available inside uh, props dot title and then we have uh, our completed value as well completed value which is uh, props dot completed like this so if you refresh this guys now now hopefully all the things will remain same you can see so now if you refresh it nothing changes because we have moved the code to its respective component and still the code is working so this is a better approach you just need to break all the things it into its own components in react application this is a major advantage what we can do is that and now we can uh, change this endpoint to receive multiple entries multiple post out there so here we can try it will return out 100 post here you can see you can just use this endpoint copy this and paste it here so this time this will be returning a array of objects paste it so if you just console log it this time we don't need to pro, uh, return this object like this we can just data to data like this and uh, for here we just want to delete this line here so let me just copy this line so here this will return an array so let me just show you in the console so if i refresh the application you will see in the console this will return this 100 post array here you can see that now we just need to display this information this is a simple array so we can use the map method so here we can do props dot data dot map function and here we can just say like this this is arrow function like this you can see that now inside this what we can do is that we can make post call this post component and here we just need to pass the things so inside this uh, map method there will be this index variable which is element so this will correspond to the individual element that is processing inside the map method so here we can again pass just paste the line here which is 
this time this will be replaced by element element dot id element sorry element dot title so we don't need the completed value we can just print out just the id and title so if you refresh it hopefully all the post will be printed out you can see id of the post is one then the title is this again the completed post sorry we need to delete this so let me just go to so we don't need to pro provide this completed value so let me just format this code so you can see that guys the application is complete now if i refresh you will see id of post is one so it is printing out the whole 100 post out there you can see if i drag down you can see so this is a simple next.js application that we have built we have uh, learned quite a lot of concepts inside this video we have learned how to make a fetch api call inside next.js we have learned how to navigate inside next.js so you can see we can have pages as well different pages inside next.js so we have learned quite a number of things and lastly if you want to build your application you can uh, execute this command which is npm run build so basically it will build out your application so it will reduce the size so just execute this so it will create a optimized version for the production so just execute this command after you build out the application so this was the tutorial guys if you like this tutorial then please hit the like button subscribe the channel and before moving on just also check out my website freemediatools.com where i publish daily tools re regarding video image and audio so please check out this website also and share it with the with your friends and also join the facebook group of this website so very famous tools are there very effective tools are there so thanks very much for watching this video and i will be seeing you in the next video